Okay, a couple things. In my removing the WRX transmission video, I mentioned this exhaust hanger bracket on the <clears throat> passenger side of the transmission. So with this on and putting the WRX cross member on, it hits right here, and I'm not going to use it anyway. So you want to take this off before you put the cross member on. I'll have to figure out some kind of bracket for over here to hang the exhaust on the correct side the WRX configuration. I noticed a difference between the cross members of the STI, which is the one I took off right here, and the WRX one. And you can see that center horizontal, go, it runs parallel with the transmission, this piece. This top piece and that bottom piece are the same, okay? They're the same. This one you can see concaves in this way. This one you can see kind of concaves in this way. And that's to make clearance for that bracket. It's the only reason I see that it's that way. So I'm going to, I just bolted the WRX cross member right up to it, you know, right there. And right there. You can just keep the whole thing as one assembly. Just don't undo these bolts and don't undo these down here. So. <clears throat> reason I put my whole WRX one on is because I already put the more solid bushings in here, the more solid bushings down in here, okay? And I noticed on the actual bushing mount, this does seem to have, it's not as squishy. It's, it's not as, it doesn't move as much. You can see it moving a little. As this one did, this one I can move it by hand pretty easily without it even being bolted onto the I mean, it moves a lot easier. Um, seems like this one, this group N that I bought, is more firm than this, even though they look very similar. And this one was bent when I got the transmission. I don't know how that bent, but it was bent, so that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be more like that instead of like that. So... Whatever this mount is, I don't know. It may be just the factory STI mount. I'm still confused if an STI mount is different than the Group N mount and all that stuff. I, I don't know. It seems like it is. So um, I know that this Group N mount in my WRX felt nice, and I put a, you know, a pitch stop, a better pitch stop, which is that thing right there. I put the Group N pitch stop on there, and that along with this and these bushings up here and here really made a nice... It felt more solid. So anyway, I stood this STI transmission up onto these boards because the input shaft sticks out further than the, you can see it sticking down there. It won't stand on end unless you have space below it. So that's how I, why I did that. It's a heavy booger. <laughs> Again, I'm not just saying that because it's an STI transmission. It actually is much beefier and you can really feel the difference when you're trying to maneuver this thing around. So I'm going to do away with this or, you know, I'll sell it with my WRX transmission stuff. And then all I got to do is put the bushings um, that I had shown you guys earlier all onto the shifting mechanism, the front shifter bushing, the pivot bushings up here, the U-joint, <clears throat> and then the rear bushing. I'll pop that on whenever before I um, get everything else on the car. So anyway then i'll do the cob short shifter and that'll involve doing the reverse lockout that i got for with the uh, stage two cob drivetrain kit comes i i ordered the uh, white and black reverse lockout whatever i'll show you how that works and then uh we just got to make sure this cable is tied off real good on here so it doesn't i've heard that if you don't do it right it you'll hear a vibrating noise and it's annoying uh, when you're in the car so anyway there we go hope this helps guys out some guys out um, now I just got to figure out how to get the transmission up high enough while it's under the car to get a jack and a platform of some kind under it to balance it and to put it up in there um, just to scoot the transmission under the car um, there's it's I remember getting the WRX transmission out between between the cross you know that cross member here on the ground was very very close 
It was very tight. Um, I did raise it up a little bit with my burly freaking <laughs> made in the USA six ton jack stands. I raised it up a little more, but that just makes it harder for me to get it up higher to put it in there and bolt the Dane cross member to the frame of the car. So that's the next thing I got to figure out how I'm going to, once I get that sucker underneath the car positioned, how it's supposed to be lift it high enough to get some kind of platform under it so I can put the jack under it. And I need a jack that goes taller too. It's just, I just uh, spent all my money on <laughs> the swap parts themselves and didn't get a jack yet. But whatever I do, I'll let you guys know. I'll show you that. I'll, I'll show you. So I just wanted to clear something up for some of you that might not have an understanding the way I didn't have an understanding of the push versus pull style clutch. Um, it messed with my head before because I imagined something pulling on the clutch fork. Um, I'm like, what's, how the heck does, a you know, something pull the clutch fork, uh, when you're pushing the clutch, right? So that's not the right way to think about it. Um, the way it is and what designates the push versus pull style clutch is in terms of when you push the clutch pedal and what happens with the clutch fork, um, is exactly this. So on the STI, it's a pull style clutch. And why it's called that is number one, yes, the clutch is a pull style clutch itself. It's how it's designed. Um, on the STI pull style mechanism, you push the clutch pedal. Here's your slave cylinder right here. The piston comes out and pushes against the clutch fork and the clutch fork goes like this. When that happens on the inside, when it's attached to the throat bearing on the inside of the bell housing, when this gets pushed that way, the inside of it goes up. And if you imagine it's bolted to the engine and the clutch is in there, when that clutch fork goes like this, it pulls the throwout bearing and pressure plate away from the engine and disengages the clutch. On the WRX, the slave cylinder is on this side and the piston is facing this way against the clutch fork, which is basically like this. When you push the clutch pedal, the clutch fork goes like this. And on the inside of the bell housing, the clutch fork goes whoo, attached to the throwout bearing, pushing the pressure plate toward the engine and disengaging the clutch. So the difference between the push and pull style is simply how does the clutch disengage once you push the clutch pedal? The STI, it so happens when you push the clutch pedal, it pulls the throwout bearing and the pressure plate and that disengages the clutch and then the WRX clutch just the opposite the clutch fork will push against the pressure plate and disengage the clutch so it's all in the different design of the clutch and then you just have to set up the throwout bearing and um, the uh, sorry the slave cylinder and the fork in such a way to make that happen for whichever car you have so obviously the STI is set up like this. WRX, you got the slave cylinder on this side pointing this way, and it just moves the clutch fork in a different direction when you push the clutch pedal. So hopefully, you guys, that helps clear that up for some of you who might not understand that. I didn't want to admit that I didn't understand that because I didn't want to, you know, come across as I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm like that sometimes. It's like I've been working on cars since I was 13, and I'm 47, and I never knew that. So, you know, like I said in an earlier video, you, you really can't ever know enough. And uh, I'm glad that I have an understanding now of the push versus pull style clutch. Um, I found some kind of website a while back and read it about 50 times. And I'm like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> Sometimes I'm slow. It's another tip, you guys. Take this bracket that holds the pitch stop off before you try to slide it under the car. I'll give you some more clearance. Probably a couple inches more. All right, I'm doing the bushings now, doing the short throw shifter. Um, I got a cob shifter. So you have to take a three 30 seconds uh, punch 
three thirty seconds. You could probably use a little bit bigger one. And I already punched it out, but this pin goes all the way through and holds it on this reverse lockout onto the shaft. And if you're going to use the same reverse lockout, you have to unscrew that back plate and pull the whole thing off and then put it back on to another uh, shifter. And I got the Cobb reverse lockout, which has everything. It replaces that whole thing onto the Cobb shifter. So it has the actual lockout, this piece, same kind of shape piece. It has new little screws and a hex head tool for those and a new pin to drive through to hold it all onto the Cobb shifter. Um, so to get the shifter out, you need to go in here and there's one of those squeeze like a C-clip, okay? I'll show you in a second. Um, so I got I already like tapped this um, pin out. I just put it back in for video purposes. I'm gonna pull it out. There's this and a spring in there, okay? Pull that off. And that frees the reverse lockout cable and it you can make it go up back in there when you install it the new shift lever you have the cable down here you grab it with pliers and you move it up and that puts the uh, little t uh, there's a little end on the cable in that slot if you grab pliers and grab that cable, you will, I'll show you here. So you do this and you see that a piece in there goes through and there's a hole in that piece. You have to go through that hole while also going through the reverse lockout piece. So that's that. It's kind of self-explanatory. You'll see when you, if you get to this point, if you change a different shifter. Um, see if I can make the light there we go you can see in here there's a one of those darn C clips it's so blurry I don't know why but anyway so you grab these kind of little C clip removers right there and you okay now you can see it it's not so blurry you go in here i got to get this well what i'm going to do first is pull this reverse lockout cable just all the way out so just pull you'll see what direction it goes pull it out there we go that frees once you okay now get this out i already un, already loosened that so pull this bolt out that holds the that's the pivot now you can move this around really freely to get to that C-clip. Okay, so just grab it. I'm getting that shifter the heck out of the way. All right, so I got it. So I'm going to squeeze and pop that thing out it's harder than it looks. I didn't have a really good grip on it. You squeeze this sucker. So I finally got that booger out. And once you get it out, it looks like this. I'm going to clean that out, put some fresh like lithium based grease in there or no it's molly based is what the what it suggests so i got some molly based grease i'll slap in there this part just pops right off when you grab it then you can grab that c-clip off use a small screwdriver when you're getting that dang thing out and when you squeeze the two ends together take that screwdriver and stick it inside that other piece and put it on the back of it and pry it out that's the easiest way i found just pry it out there 
and uh, comes right out of that groove in there, okay? All right, forget pulling that cable with pliers, guys. All you do is move this into this position up here and line those two holes up like that. Put a pin in there. I'm going to use the pin that uh, held the reverse lockout in. I'm going to set my phone down real quick. Okay, now... I just stuck that same pin I drove out of the shifter lever in there. Now the cable sticks out far enough to where it lines up. You got that hole that the pin goes through lined up in the slot of the shifter. Right there. Perfect. That's how it's done. I just learned that. <laughs> so instead of... This one, you can see the shape, this piece. Goes just like that. You can, it's kind of self-explanatory because if that ball is in there, that piece that holds the bushing goes and matches up with the holes in the lever, just like that. Of course, this is gonna be the front of the car. So just make sure the piece with the big hole in it goes toward the front of the car. That's all. So make sure you put, when you put that ball into this little cup, have those O-rings just like. Okay, so what I decided to do is put the O-ring down in there first, all the way at the bottom. And then once that little plastic cup seats down in there, it'll go, it'll be where it needs to be. <laughs> the bottom O-ring on this cup, I just, I put it down in there first. Don't forget to put that C-clip on the <laughs> over that ball and onto that lever first. I forgot, so I had to take that top half of the shifter lever off. Okay, <laughs> snap that in there. Trying to. I'll have to do it with two hands and kind of squeeze those ends and push it in there with a screwdriver it's almost in there um yeah and i had to take this off thankfully it's adjustable height this adjusts for the throw and the height with those allen head screws i'll just have to tighten it back on there now that i have that c-clip back so don't if you get the cob you can take that off if you forget to put that c-clip on I think the other shifters, you got you better put it on over that little ball first, or that you'll have to try to pull that cup out. It's actually in there pretty firm, that cup. Once it goes in there and that O-ring seats um, in that groove, the top groove, it's pretty hard to pull out, actually. Anyway. What I ended up doing, guys, was I actually pulled that pin out, and I pulled this whole cable off, and I could move the cable way easy, far enough, to where the hole in the end of the cable lines up with the slot on this and that worked much better and then I just put the cable back on to that little mechanism there and yeah this bushing is so loud it's squeaking <laughs> uh, I don't like and it's so loose it's just not my kind of shifting but I'm gonna fix that with what I showed you in another video these solid bushings and then I just got to do the U-joint. This short throw shifter was a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. Um, glad it's on. <laughs> and the reverse lockout works perfect. Yay. Perfect. And yeah, good to go there. All right, guys. So I put the transmission on this 2x12. Put those eyelets on each corner ratchet strapped it down that way at least it won't fall off the board and yeah i got her up like i don't know three and a half inches got to get it up about seven inches off the floor so that this will fit under there 
Then I can shove those up through there. Yeah. Good stuff. Having fun. Slowly but surely. I can't wait to have this thing bolted up in there. I'm doing this by myself, so, you know, I have to be careful. And I don't want to be dropping this transmission on my, well, on any part of my body. It's, uh, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> anyway. And it's very windy and cold here in Wyoming today, but I'm safe and sound and warm in my garage.